All right, our very first lesson of unit two. So in unit one, you learned how to solve and write any kind of equation that involved one variable. If there was one thing that we didn't know, uh, we could write an equation, solve an equation to figure out what that unknown was, right? So one thing that we didn't know, we could figure it out. So here in unit two now, we're going to talk about what happens if there are two things that we don't know uh, and how we can use equations to help us find solutions for those. So right in our very first lesson here, we're just going to talk about um, how we can, you know, look at these equations, how can we decide what some solutions would be and how to use tables and graphs to do that. So just to start us off here, a little bit of warm up, remembering how to solve. So go ahead and pause your video and see what you can do with this one variable equation. All right, so this was pretty easy review from our last unit. So I would say the first thing I would do is probably distribute the four. So I would get four y plus eight plus 12 equals 64. Now to make my life easier, I would then add my like terms over here on this side. So I would get 4y plus 20 equals 64. And then subtract 20 from both sides so I can start getting my variable by itself. I get 4y equals 44. And then finally divide both sides by 4 and get y equals 11. Now that was pretty, uh, pretty easy review from unit one. Hopefully that was pretty easy for you as well. Just remembering our, or, uh, you know, our process that we go through, simplify anything we can, combine our like terms first, move those loose guys. The 20 was the easiest one to move. And then uh, finally dividing at our, as our last step to get our variable by itself. All right, so that was review of unit one. Now, I wanted to start you off with just a situation so that you could see what it would look like when you're wanting to figure out two different things in the same situation. So here's problem number one. Shay needs to have $500 for her vacation this summer. Her grandparents gave her $100 for her birthday. Additionally, she wants to save $50 a week. How many weeks will it take for Shay to have enough money for her vacation? It says to label each axis, so that's over here on the graph, and then identify your variables. And I would say you probably want to identify your variables first and then label your graph with whichever one you decide. So it looks like, what are we talking about here? We're talking about the number of weeks, how many weeks, right, it will take because she's saving so much per week. And then we're talking about money, right? So the other one that we would have is how much money she is saving. So I, we would say usually we put time on the x-axis. So x is going to be the number of weeks. So here I'm defining my variable and then I'm gonna put down here number of weeks on my axis. But I'm also going to label this axis with some numbers. Now we usually say that if you don't see any numbers on your graph, on your axis, it goes up by ones. That's what we would naturally assume. We always have to label our axis if we want to use a scale that's other, by one, other than by ones. But no matter what, it's nice to have the numbers there. So I recommend that you always put the numbers on the graph. All right, so then the other thing that we're trying to find is how much money she's saving. So Y will be the total money saved. And then I'm going to write that over here on this y-axis on my graph, total money saved. And here again, we have to write our numbers on our graph for how much we want each line to be worth. Now we're talking about $50 a week, $100 for her birthday, saving $500. There's no way we could go up by ones on this one. I see that she wants to save $50 a week, so maybe going up by 50s would work. So I'm going to say that first line is 50 and then 100. 150, 200, etc. And I'm going to label them all the way up to the top of my graph just so that I have a clear picture of where to put things when I want to. Okay, 550, so the very top will be $600. All right, so I have my uh, I have my variables identified, I have my graph labeled. So now I just need to figure out what points am I putting on the graph? So it says that 
Her grandparents gave her $100 for her birthday. I don't know when that was, but I'm assuming that's before she started saving, right? So before we even started saving, at, time, at number of weeks of zero, she had $100 in her bank account. So that first point is gonna be at the $100 mark, right? She had that before she even started. And then it says she wants to save $50 a week. So after that first week, she has the $100 from her grandparents, and then she has $50 more. So that would be $150. So my first point is going to be right there. Okay. Then we have so our second point. She's going to go up another $50. And then our third point, our third week, she'll go up another $50. So she'll be at $250 after three weeks. Okay. And then after four weeks, she'll be at 300. And then we can kind of see a pattern going here, right? Look at those points. And what are they forming? Well, they're kind of forming a line. So I should be able then to take and draw a line that would follow that pattern. And I don't have to make a table anymore because I can kind of see how it's going to go. Now, hopefully you could draw a little bit straighter than I can, but you get the idea. Now, it asks us to figure out how many weeks for her to save enough money for her vacation, and she had to save $500 to go on her vacation. So now I can use this graph and my line to figure out where is that $500 mark. Well, here's 500, right? So if I go across, if my line was perfectly straight, it would land right there on that point. Well, how many weeks is that? If I follow it down to check, it would take her eight weeks to save up $500. Now, do you see how making that table and kind of following the pattern and then continuing the pattern with our line helped us find that answer pretty quickly, right? So when we had two different things we didn't know, we didn't know how much money she had saved and we didn't know how many weeks it was going to take, we have those two unknowns and we can use this graph in order to help us find the solution there. Now the interesting thing about this one is that it formed a line. So those are the types of equations that we're going to be talking about here in unit two. These things are called linear equations. So what is a linear equation? A linear equation is any equation that would form a line. Linear means a line. Right? Now, these linear equations have some things that are always in common, right? So they always have two variables. Any equation that has two variables could be considered. Now, not all two variable equations will form lines, right? But, uh, but they could be, and so that's, they, will, they have to have two variables in order to form a line. So they always have two variables. Usually we think about x and y when we're talking about um, our linear equations. And then often they can be written in this form that we call y equals mx plus b. Now hopefully that's a little familiar to you. You've heard it before. But if you can rearrange, get y by itself, and have some number times x plus another number, if you can write it in that form, then usually it will form a line. Or it will form a line. But not all equations can be written like that. Some linear equations will look a little bit different. But most of the time, if you can write it in y equals mx plus b, it will form a line. So a linear equation is any equation that would form a line. All right. So now that we're thinking about these equations with two variables, we have to think about how do I know if something is a solution? So back in our unit one, we knew it was a solution when it made the equation work, right? When I plugged it in, the left side equaled the right side. So the same idea works here for two variables. When The only thing is I'm not just plugging in one number, I'm plugging in two numbers. So if you think about um, our, whenever we have a coordinate point here, right? When I put things on a graph, I have an X and a Y. And now hopefully you remember that when I have this ordered pair, the X's always come first and the Y's come second, right? In the ordered pair, it goes X comma Y. So in order to figure out if this point is a solution to my equation, 
I am going to plug in 3 for x, 2 for y, and see if the equation works. So for example, my equation is negative 3x plus 2y equals 15. So I'll have negative 3 times 3 plus 2 times 2 equals 15. So I took this equation right here and I plugged in a number for x that was from my coordinate and a number for y that was also from my coordinate and uh, I will see if it works. So now I just have to do a little bit of work. Let's see. Negative 3 times 3 is negative 9. 2 times 2 is 4. So I have negative 9 plus 4 is supposed to equal 15. Well, negative 9 plus 4 equals negative 5. Ooh, negative 5 does not equal 15. So since when I plug these numbers in, it did not work in the equation, that point is not a solution. Okay, well now they gave us a second uh, ordered pair here to check, so let's do the same process on the second one. So this time, x will be negative 4, and y will be 1.5. Oh, that's crazy. Let's see what happens here. So again, same equation, so negative 3, but this time I'm going to multiply it by negative 4, plus 2 times 1.5 is supposed to equal 15. All right, do a little work. Let's see, negative 3 times negative 4 is positive 12. 2 times 1.5 is 3. So I have 12 plus 3 is supposed to equal 15. This is looking good, but notice I am going to keep continuing on with my work and not quit here. I need to show for sure, ah, yes, 15 does equal 15. Hooray! This is a solution then. When you plug it in, when you plug in the two numbers, one for x and one for y, in the correct spots, and your left side equals your right side, then you have a solution. Make sure you're showing good work though and getting all the way down till you have a single number on each side so it can prove very clearly if it's a solution or not. So that's how we know when things are solutions. If you, when you plug in the values for x and y, it works in the equation. It makes the equation true. So then when I'm trying to, when I just have an equation like this one, there are many, many, many different possibilities that could work, right? So we're going to learn how we can use a table to find those solutions. So when we have a table, uh, when we have an equation, we're going to use a table. We always set it up like this. So first thing we have to do is decide which x values we want to plug in. Sometimes they're given to us. Sometimes we have to figure it out for ourselves. All right, this second equation or second box here is where I'm going to take this equation that I have and I'm going to write it here so that I'm going to solve for y. I know what the x value is because it's given, so I will be plugging in that x value and then I'll be able to solve it for y. So this is the spot where I'm going to show my work. And the work is going to come from the equation that they give us. All right. And then after I have solved for y, I'm just going to write just the answer over here in this column so that it's very clear what sh uh, what my coordinate will be, what my ordered pair will be, because I'm going to pick out whatever number I get here. Oops, I meant to do this. And whatever number I get here will get plopped into the right spots in my ordered pair. All right, so let me show you an example. So first then, let's say my first number I'm going to pick. Now we could pick any numbers we want, right? Let's pick, I don't know, negative one first. So then in this middle uh, section, y will equal negative 4 times negative 1 because that was the x value that we picked here plus 2. Negative 4 times negative 1 is positive 4 plus 2 so y equals 6. So I'm going to write the, just the number 6 here and now I should be very easily be able to see okay my ordered pair is negative 1 comma 6. And I could go ahead and put that point right on the graph. Negative 1, x is come first, that goes left to right, so left 1 and then up 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Here is my first point. Alright, and then we would just repeat that process with 
different numbers. I usually then go, let's say negative one, zero, one, two, kind of like that, as long as they make sense. All right, so next one we'll do is zero. Okay, so here we'll have y equals negative four times zero plus two. So that would be, let's see, negative four times zero is just zero plus two. So I'll get just two. So my ordered pair here is zero, two. So I'll go zero left and right, two up. There's my second point. All right. And then after that, you know, I continue the process, same thing. Let's say I have now positive one. So I'll plug in y equals negative four times one. Oops, missed changing colors there. There we go, times one plus two. So that would be negative four plus two, which gives me negative two. So my y value for that is negative two. So in my ordered pair here, I will have one comma negative two. So I'll go one to the right, two down. Okay, and we could continue that process. I kind of ran out of space, but um, hopefully, you know, like usually three or four points gives you a pretty good idea because now when I look at this over here, I see, oh, that is forming a line, isn't it? And I could continue that line in both directions and hopefully you can draw it nice and straight. Now, the thing to note is we only found three points, right? But we picked three random x values. You could pick any x values you want. You could plug in negative 1,287 if you wanted to and find a point that goes along with it. So the trick is when you have a, a graph and you have a situation like this and your graph forms a line, any points on the line are solutions to that equation. So any points on the line are solutions. We make the table to find a few solutions in order to figure out the pattern and draw the line. But then after that, any points on the line are solutions to our equation. Okay, so that's what the value is of making a table. We can find that pattern, we can do a little bit of work, and then draw the line to find a whole bunch of more solutions really, really quickly. Now in the last one, it was nice and easy for us because I knew exactly what I wanted to put in this uh, middle part. Uh, second column for work, right? I have, I found, I plugged in some x's and then I, my equation said y equals, right, in order to find what y was and then plug it into my ordered pair. Now in this equation, my, uh, my equation says negative x plus 2y equals negative 8. Oh, well, that's going to be tricky, right, in order to solve for y. I'm going to have to be moving stuff around every time. So if y isn't by itself, the first thing we want to do is to get y equals first, right? Move things around in this equation so that y is by itself, so that it'll be a lot easier to show my work in that table. So we practiced this back in unit one, solving for a variable, right? If I want to get y by itself, I got to move this loose guy first. So I'm going to add x to both sides. So then I'll have 2y equals x minus 8, right? Those are not like terms, so I need to, I can't combine them. They just get written next to each other. x was positive, 8 was negative, so positive x minus 8. Technically, you could write it in the other order, but uh, this order will kind of help us in the future, so I recommend you start getting in the habit of putting the x's first and the numbers second. Now i got to get rid of the 2, and remember that I have to divide every single term by 2. I can't just pick and choose. So I get y equals, let's see, ooh, x over 2. That's really 1x over 2, so that's really like 1 half x. And then negative 8 divided by 2 is negative 4. So now I have y equals 1 half x minus 4. Well, that's going to save me a ton of time when I am showing my work to solve for x. So that's always our first step in making our table, is if it's not in y equals to start with, we got to get y by itself first. Okay, so now I'm going to pick some numbers, but remember, I'm going to plug this number in for x here, right? And that means that my first step is going to be multiplying by a half. I don't know about you, but I do not want to have to graph half points on my uh, 
coordinate plane over here. Those are itty bitty squares to start with. So I'm going to figure out what values can I plug in for x where I'm going to get whole numbers and not have to graph halvesies. Could you technically pick any number you want? Absolutely. So I'm going to make it easy on myself and pick easy numbers. So the first number I'm going to pick, uh, let's go with negative 2. Whoops, don't write with highlighter. Here we go, negative 2. So then I will have y equals 1 half times negative 2 minus 4. Whoops. Okay, so I'm going to solve that out. So that'll be half of negative 2 is negative 1 minus 4, which gives me negative 5. So my first ordered pair here will be negative 2, negative 5. Left 2 down, 3, 4, 5. There's my first point. Okay, same process. 0 will be easy. Let's plug in 0 next. Okay, so I'll have y equals 1 half times 0 minus 4. So this will be 0, right? 1 half times 0 is 0 minus 4. So this will give me negative 4. So my ordered pair here is 0, comma, negative 4. So 0 left or right, 1, 2, 3, 4 down goes right there. Okay. And now I'm not going to pick 1. That would give me a halvesy. I'm going to pick, let's pick positive 2. So I have y equals 1 half times positive 2 minus 4. So 1 half of 2 is positive 1. 1 minus 4 gives me negative 3. So my ordered pair for this will be 2 comma negative 3. Okay, now I'm going to plop that on my graph. So right 2, down 1, 2, 3. And there's my next point. Now, even with that, I can see I ran out of space again, but maybe one more point would be helpful. But I think I can see where it's going here, right? Here's my line. And then remember that any point on this line is a solution, so it should make my life a lot easier to find other solutions without having to do all the work of the table. Okay, but remember, when you can pick whatever x's make sense. So if you've got fractions, pick numbers that'll make uh, whole numbers and make your work easy so you don't have to deal with fractions. All right, hopefully that gave you um, a quick intro, a good intro to this idea of equations with two variables. So two variables, uh, any two variable equation that we call a, is a linear equation if it forms a line. So making a table is a great way to find some solutions in order to make that graph then uh, and find a lot of solutions by looking at any point on the graph is a solution. If you have to, solve your equation for y first so that it makes making that table a lot easier.